the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from Wisdom of the Idiots by Idris Shah. This audio is made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. Note Because what narrow thinkers imagine to be wisdom is often seen by the Sufis to be folly, the Sufis, in contrast, sometimes call themselves the idiots. By a happy chance, too, the Arabic word for saint, wali, has the same numerical equivalent as the word for idiot, balid. So we have a double motive for regarding the Sufi great ones as our own idiots. This book contains some of their knowledge. The Fruit of Heaven There was once a woman who had heard of the fruit of heaven. She coveted it. She asked a certain dervish, whom we shall call Sabah, How can I find this fruit, so that I may attain to immediate knowledge? You would be best advised to study with me, said the dervish. But if you will not do so, you will have to travel resolutely and at times restlessly throughout the world. She left him and sought another, Arif the wise one, and then found Hakim the sage, then Majzub the mad, then Alim the scientist, and many more. She passed thirty years in her search. Finally she came to a garden. There stood the tree of heaven, and from its branches hung the bright fruit of heaven. Standing beside the tree was Sabah, the first dervish. Why did you not tell me when we first met that you were the custodian of the fruit of heaven? she asked him. Because you would not then have believed me. Besides, the tree produces fruit only once in thirty years and thirty days. Haughty and Generous The Sufis, unlike other mystics or supposed possessors of special knowledge, are reputed to be haughty. This auteur, they themselves say, is only due to other people's misunderstanding of their behaviour. A person, they say, who could make fire without rubbing sticks together and said so, would appear haughty to someone who could not. They are also reputed to be generous in the extreme. Their generosity, they say, is in things which really matter. Their open-handedness in material things is only a reflection of their generosity with wisdom. People who want to study the Sufi way often practice generosity with goods in an attempt to reach a greater form of generosity. However that may be, there is an entertaining story told of three generous men of Arabia. One day there was a dispute among the Arabs as to who was the most generous man alive. The arguments went on for days, and finally the candidates were, by general agreement, narrowed down to three. Since the supporters of the free were on the point of coming to blows on the question, a committee was appointed to make the final decision. They decided that, as an eliminating test, a message should be sent to each of the three men in the following terms. Your friend Wais is in great need. He begs you to help him in a material manner. Three representatives were dispatched to seek out these men to deliver the message and to report the result. The first messenger arrived at the house of the first generous man 
and told him what the committee had commissioned him to say. The first generous man said, Don't bother me with such trifles. Just take anything that you want from what is mine and give it to my friend Wais. When this emissary returned, the assembled people thought that surely there could be no greater generosity than this, and Auteur too. But the second messenger, when he had given his message, received this reply from the second generous man's servant. Since my master is very haughty indeed, I cannot disturb him with a message of any kind, but I will give you all that he has, and also a mortgage upon his immovable property. The committee, when they received this message, imagined that this surely must be the most generous man in Arabia but they had not yet considered the result of the mission of the third messenger. He arrived at the home of the third generous man, who told him, Just pack up all my belongings and take this note to the moneylender to liquidate all my property, and wait here a little until someone should come to you from me. Whereupon the third generous man walked away. When the messenger had finished the task, he found that an agent from the market was already at the door. The agent said, If you are the messenger from Wais to his friend, I have to deliver to you the price of one slave just sold in the slave market. The slave had been the third generous man. It is further related that some months later, Wais himself, who had been a member of the Committee of Judges, visited a house where a slave waiting upon him turned out to be his friend, the third generous man. Wais said, A joke can go too far. Is it not about time that you were released from captivity? The third generous man, who was a Sufi, said, A joke to some may not be so to others. Besides, I am in conformity with law, working out my release by arrangement with my master. It will only be a matter of two or three years before I am again free. The Casket of Jewels the tale is told of a woman who was carrying a casket of jewels of various sizes to a jeweler's shop. Just outside the shop she tripped, and the box fell to the ground. The top came off the casket, and the jewels were scattered everywhere. The jeweler's assistants ran from the shop to prevent passers-by from taking any of the gems, and they helped to collect them. An ostrich, which was wandering about, ran past, and unnoticed in the excitement swallowed the largest and best stone. When the woman missed this jewel she started to lament, and in spite of looking everywhere, it could not be found. Someone said, The only person who could have taken that stone was yonder dervish, sitting quietly beside the shop. The dervish had seen the ostrich swallow the stone, but he did not want blood to be spilt. Therefore, when he was searched and seized and even beaten, he said no more than, I have not taken anything at all. While he was being beaten, one of his companions came up and reminded the mob to be careful of what they were doing. They seized him, too, and accused him of having probably taken the stone from the first dervish in spite of his denials. This scene was proceeding thus when there appeared a man endowed with knowledge. Noticing the ostrich, he asked, Was that bird here at the time when the casket was dropped? Yes, said the people. In that case, he answered, address your attentions to the ostrich. The owner of the ostrich was paid the value of the bird, which was then killed. In its stomach was found the missing jewel.
This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.